Well, the whistleblower complaint is out just a day after the uh, the, the uh, transcript of the uh, call between uh, the Ukrainian president and uh, President Donald Trump uh, came out. And uh, as you might imagine, uh, the uh, the response has been uh, quite polarized. Uh, obviously, uh, the uh, Republicans think that you know this completely uh, exonerates Trump of all wrongdoing. Uh, and shows absolutely nothing, um, you know, impeachable. And the Democrats think that, oh my gosh, this is it. The walls are closing in. Trump's done. How can he survive this? This is the most terrible uh, piece of evidence, most damning thing that's ever been levied against a president. And I feel like I should say, well, the truth is somewhere in the middle. But to be honest, there, I really don't see anything in this that can hurt Trump. And it certainly is, you know, I, I, anything is impeachable in theory because, you know, Congress determines what you know, how to define high crimes and misdemeanors. You know, so the question of impeachment is always a political one. However, I don't think that there's going to be enough political will uh, to do this. You're not going to sway very many Republicans at all that, there's, that, you know, Trump did anything wrong. If they were already in a position of supporting Trump, I don't think that you're going to get anyone who, you know, voted for Trump that's going to say, oh my gosh, this is, this is terrible. You know, but of course, in theory, you know, the Democrats don't need to swing anyone that voted for Trump directly. They just need to vote for uh, they just need to swing, you know, the Republicans in the Senate who have to answer to the people who voted for Trump. But even still, there's nothing in this that I could see uh, that would persuade uh, any uh, U.S. senators uh, that are, you know, Republicans to vote to impeach the president, uh, even if they might like the result, because the, you know, the result would be President Mike Pence, which I think most people in the Senate would probably be happier with. But remember, impeachment is a political question, and I don't think politically that there's really any um, there's really any appetite for this at this point, other than on the Democratic side. You know, as Michael Tracy put it best, I think, uh, he basically looked at this and said, yeah, can you make the case that what Trump said to the Ukrainian president was inappropriate and maybe something that he shouldn't have said, that we wouldn't, you know, that a, a, uh, a good, cordial, uh, uh, polite U.S. president who was playing by all of the happy rules, uh, would, would that kind of a president say this? No. Um, you know, so it is inappropriate, but Trump says things that are inappropriate every single day. You can't impeach Trump at this point for saying something inappropriate when that's all he does all the time. You're going to need something a little more substantial, something shocking, uh, something that will jar people. And this whistleblower complaint about an alleged call that uh, the whistleblower didn't even hear uh, is not it. I mean, when you read uh, this whistleblower complaint, it's all hearsay. All this uh, whistleblower is talking about are things that he heard from anonymous sources. So, I mean, this is basically like a uh, uh, just a random post on uh, the in the Washington Post or the or the uh, uh, New York Times. This is an anonymous story. It's nothing more. It just happens to be written by someone who worked somewhere in the government. We don't know where. And that's why uh, Zero Hedge, I think, very accurately dubbed this this whistleblower the gossip blower, uh, because that's all they're blowing here. Uh, it's just a bunch of gossip, you know. Because uh, just as an example, the gossip blower's sources say that uh, Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, had to quote play ball if he wanted to get uh, of the phone call uh, with Donald Trump, as a, you know, sort of a prerequisite, meaning that as a prerequisite to get the call with Trump, Zelensky had to, you know, agree to. Um, uh, investigating Biden and getting Trump dirt on him for, for the election campaign. Now, there's no evidence of that anywhere. Uh, there's nobody even really accusing that other than this whistleblower saying that, well, he's not accusing Trump directly of this, uh, but his sources say that uh, Trump you know, may have done this. In other words, uh, all we have are rumors about a quid pro quo, but there is no quid quo, quid pro quo uh, at all in the call. Which, of course, we, you know, we already established yesterday in here in the call. But, you know, we thought, I guess the Democrats were holding out hope. Hey, you know, even though there was no quid pro quo in the call, even though they're saying that there was, there wasn't, um, you know, maybe uh, the whistleblower will have something even more than the call uh, to go on. And uh, the only thing that the whistleblower brings to the table is his anonymous sources. I mean, and even what he cites uh, from his anonymous sources um, is not really all that bad. Um, because uh, he, he get when he gets into the part of what exactly Trump was trying to pressure the Ukrainian president to do, uh, he cites a uh, Ukrainian government uh, a readout of the call, uh, which says that they talked about corruption. It mentions nothing about Biden. 
uh, the uh, the parts about Biden, about this all being about Joe Biden and about everything wanting to dig up, dig up dirt about Joe Biden, is all comes from this whistleblower's hearsay, not from anything that you know they actually witnessed. And in fact, to quote the whistleblower, uh, him or herself, uh, I was not a witness to most of the events. So in other words, this is not Edward Snowden uh, coming out and saying, hey. <laughs> I have all this evidence of uh, the U.S. committing war crimes in Iraq, and uh, you know they did some pretty bad stuff, and I think the American people should know about that. Uh, this is basically um, Edward Snowden's cousin coming out and saying, hey, I know a guy who once saw a tape of, of the army murdering civilians. Okay, Edward Snowden's cousin is not a whistleblower. Edward Snowden is just a guy with some, co or it's just some guy with a cousin that works in the in the government and tells him stories. And the whistleblower in this case, with the whole Ukraine Gate mini scandal thing that's been going on in this past week, is not a whistleblower. They're just some guy who talked to some people who say some things. Now again, let me point out that there is no uh, evidence that this whistleblower has brought up uh, that shows that Trump. Uh, pressured, even pr you know, put any pressure at all on the Ukrainian president to cooperate with him and to try and dig up dirt on Biden. Um, that's just not in the transcript. There's no explicit uh, example of Trump saying, "Hey, <laughs> you better do what I want, or else you're not going to get what you want for me." Okay, a quid pro quo is explicit. That's you know, that's kind of how it works. You can't say, "Oh, well, I felt like." Uh, you know, if I didn't sleep with him, I wouldn't get the job. Well, that's not the same as the guy telling you, hey, you won't get the job unless you sleep with me. But, you know, nevertheless, uh, what is CNN's headline? Well, CNN's headline is the uh, the top accusation from the whistleblower, the accusation that's completely unfounded, and that is the uh, that uh, Trump tried to get Ukraine to interfere and covered it up. Boom, we've got them, boys. Ukrainian collusion. Now, the part about the cover-up is another thing that the uh, anonymous sources say. The anonymous sources say that uh, they tried to uh, hurriedly try and bury uh, the transcript of this call. You know, the transcript that was just released? Yeah, apparently the whistleblower says that uh, you know the Trump administration tried to cover that up because, in his words, um, the whistleblower's words, they knew just how damaging and what the gravity was of what they had done, so they had to cover it up. You know, see, this is just like Watergate. See, the, the only thing worse than the Watergate scandal was the cover-up of the Watergate scandal. But I'm pretty much tired of this. I mean, as I've said it before, I'll say it uh, yet again. Democrats, please, there are, you, if you want to impeach Trump, you can do it. Just pick something that's actually legitimate. You can impeach pretty much any president. Most presidents do things that are perfectly impeachable and, some, and, and things that if you highlighted them and told uh, you know, the American people about them, people would be outraged about it. In this case, uh, you know, it's, the, it's the, uh, the Yemen war, the Yemen war that uh, Obama started or rather that Obama jumped in with on you know, Mohammed bin Salman and Trump has continued. Okay, You can impeach Trump over that if you really want to. But other than that, I don't see anything uh, that comes anywhere close. Uh, to uh, violating the Constitution, uh, you know, I, I certainly don't see how this comes anywhere close to violating the Constitution, uh, considering that Trump is just saying stuff. I mean, arguably, you could say that giving Ukraine money violates the Constitution uh, more so than you know saying that uh, denying Ukraine money uh, violates the Constitution. But anyway, if you get anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and uh, sharing this video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because I do upload every day and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.